Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha, Kodash. <clears throat> Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. And um, this is a uh, response or add on uh, to the video that was done by the elder apostle Gabar um, titled, We Got the Talent. Let's do a video daily. And um, I got about 12 minutes in, you know, I'm uh, planning to finish it. But uh, the spur just jumped on me now. Originally, I had a lesson planned, uh, which was similar. OK, it was uh, similar in topic. Um, and I had I had I had it jotted down in my notes as the Lord is the battery in our back. OK, um, so through the spirit, you know, I'm just going to uh, say a few words on it and low willing to be edifying to the elect. OK, and starting with uh, this precept right here, which is very um, one of the first precepts that came to mind. OK, and this is the book of First Peter, chapter five, verse two. And we know uh, who the apostle Peter was. OK, but it says here, feed the flock of God, which is among you, which the flock of God is referring on to the um, the sheep. OK, the listeners, the believers. And then guess what? That even goes into ourselves because not only do we do we uh, feed the Lord's sheep, we also feed each other because we are also a part of the Lord's sheep. OK, so we're shepherds as well as sheep. We feed and we are also fed. So it says, uh, feed the flock of God, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. All right. And that says a lot right there in that in that one verse, because it's not just about you're doing the work. It's about the spirit that you're doing it in, because on the overall scale, yes, it is beneficial that you have a lot of Israelites that are teaching, you know, that we are Israelites and so on and so forth. But and that's that's on the overall scale. So that's beneficial on a high level because the gospel of at least us being Israelites is being spread, which is good. Right. It's 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 going to at least hook some people in and the Lord can direct them from there. Now, on a more granular level, dealing with the actual teachers or the actual individuals, it's not going to be really beneficial for you if you are not teaching the word of the Lord in the right spirit. OK, doing the work of the Lord goes beyond just, oh, all right, I, I did my three videos for the week or I did this and I'm, that's it. I'm done. OK, it's as it says here, you have to do while well, the Apostle Peter is saying, do the work of the Lord, not by constraint. So let's look into that word constraint, meaning you shouldn't have to be forced in order to do the, do the work of the Lord. If you're a true prophet, the word constraint in the Greek is um, ana ag kastos, um, or an ana ag kastos, ana kastos. Okay. Uh, anyway, it says by force or constraint. Okay, compulsorily by constraint so really you shouldn't even have to be told a a after a certain point that you have to do a lesson like they shouldn't you know like the apostle tahar shouldn't have to give an order for brothers to do lessons before you do lessons if you're if you're a prophet of the lord you know if you're a man of the lord a true believer a teacher it should naturally be within you to speak the word of the lord what happened when jeremiah said he wasn't going to speak of the lord anymore he didn't he didn't need somebody to come and give him an order. Hey, go out there and, and, and speak. He said he himself said that the word of the Lord was like a like a fire within him. And he couldn't he couldn't he couldn't keep his mouth closed. He had to speak the word of the Lord because that's just how it goes. All right. As a matter of fact, there's another precept. Let me get that real quick. Um, this is the book of Amos, chapter three, verse eight. It says, and, and some of these precepts, I'm, I'm sure the apostle might have brought out his lesson. Like I said, I didn't get through the whole lesson, so I'm not, I don't know if he brought out some of these or not. But nevertheless, low willing, it will still be edifying. <clears throat> so it says, uh, Amos 3 and 8, the lion hath roared, who will not fear? The Lord, Yahweh hath spoken, who can but prophesy? See, and when you read in the NLT, it says, the lion has roared, so who isn't? Uh, who isn't frightened the sovereign lord has spoken so who can refuse to proclaim his message see 
So a true man of the Lord, you can't you can't help but prophesy. You know, you can't refuse to, to, to teach the word of the Lord. And that's why the Apostle Peter said, let me go back and, and pull it up real quick. First Peter five. OK, that when you feed the feed the flock of the Lord, do it willingly, not by constraint. You don't have to be forced to do this. The spirit should naturally be with, within you to do this. As a matter of fact, look, if <clears throat> if tomorrow they, there's an article that came out that said, and this is just an example that said that, um, I don't know, the, the U.S. is developing a CBDC and it's going to be in the form of a micro C hip straight up just like that. Boom. You know, the Federal the Federal Reserve comes out and says that this is the model that we're going to go with. And as a matter of fact, this is the model the rest of the world is going to go with. Anybody that is a, that is that is in the know that knows what's going on, that is a teacher and even some that are not teachers. When you see these articles, you'll get excited. You, 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 you can't help yourself but to spread that that information. And then that's how we we, we get on these lessons and we do uh, videos. OK, to bring out. Hey, look, once again, prophecy alert. Because that's our job. And as it says here, um, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Okay, being, being, matter of fact, let's look into that word ready. So you have to, you know, really, you, you, when, you're, when you're doing the work of the Lord, it shouldn't really feel burdensome. Yeah, we know we go out there and we battle the elements and so on and so forth. But that's not, it's not the word of the Lord. It's not teaching that's burdensome. It's the, it's the elements that are making it hard. But the, the, the reason that we're able to stay out there and, and continue to go out there diligently is because we actually like the, the doing the work. OK, it's just, you know, you may have certain other hindrances that may try to make it difficult for you to do the work. But if doing the work itself is what's is what's troublesome to you or it's not it's not, I guess, you know, <laughs> whatever the term is. But if it's not if it's not sufficient enough for you then then you, you need to pray and fast, you know, if you're truly uh, um, examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. OK, so here it says um, of a ready mind, the word ready in the Greek says willingly with a larcity. OK, now let's go ahead and get some synonyms for that. A larcity. It's probably going into something like excitement or eagerness. Right. It says here a larcity, brisk and cheerful readiness, willingness, keenness, liveliness, zeal, haste. You see, like when you, um, like maybe there's something you love to do. I don't know. There's a new video game that came out or, you know, you really like playing basketball or, or boxing or whatever it is you like to do. All right. And then, and then you hear, you hear, you know, one of your friends hit you up like, yo, let's go play ball or whatever, you know, that, that oh yeah, word. I right, give me like five minutes. I'll be right down. That, that energy, that a larcity, okay, that's an example right there. That excitement that you get, you're eager to go and do it. You know, somebody makes plans to do something that you're really, really, you know, excited to do. I don't know, maybe go to Six Flags or something, taking your child to, you, you know, that that uh, reaction your child gives you when you take them to Playland or Disneyland or, or, or Toys R Us, you tell them, hey, you know, tomorrow we're going to go here. And they get so excited, they, they, they're eager, okay? So that's an example right there. All right, they have that enthusiasm to go and do it. And that is how you're supposed to be when it comes to teaching the word of the Lord. And if you have that mindset and that spirit, then it's not going to be something that you can't do daily. They, I mean, think about it, right? Put it like this. When you wake up every day, there's something that you do daily, be it go to work or I mean, definitely eat, <laughs> right? You definitely eat and you drink unless you're fasting or something, right? But there are certain activities or something that you do daily. And now ask yourself, OK, whatever it is that you do daily, that, that every single day you do, whether consciously or subconsciously, you do it. Whatever it is, is it more important than doing the work of the Lord? Meaning whatever it is that you do, is that more important than the creator who made you than 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 his requests? And the answer is likely no, even if it comes down to food is likely no. The most highs, not even likely, it is no. The most highs uh, request, the most highs will is above all. Okay, even your very existence. And when you understand that and you prioritize that, then you start to realize, wait a minute, how is it that I am doing all of these other things that I do every day? And yet 
the most important thing that I should be doing, I don't even do that daily. So then is that really the most important thing on my mind? And that's something you got to ask yourself. Because if you if you ask yourself that, then maybe the most eyes also asking him. He, he's asking him. So is this is my work the most important thing on this individual's mind? Because they can wake up and I don't know, play video games every day. They can wake up and watch TV every day. There's not a day they go by that goes by that they don't do X or Y or Z. And yet, when it comes to my word or my work, they don't do that every day. They don't, they don't, you know, whatever it is, they don't do that every day. So then, then you start to really look at it like, well, how important really is it to you? See, and how long from like, I was watching the lesson and like the, the apostle was saying, you know, it's not every video you have to do. That's like 30, 40, you know, 50, an hour or two minutes. Sometimes it is, but you know, don't, you don't have to feel like, oh, I have to, if I'm doing a lesson. I have to make sure that I stretch this lesson out to X, Y, and Z amount of time. If you do that, and that's what's making it, whenever you think of doing a lesson, you're like, oh man, I don't, I don't know how, what topic I can do that can be this long. The point is edification. So your video may be 10 minutes long, but if the content you're bringing out is edifying, is, is boosting somebody's faith or is teaching them something or is bringing out some, some new information. You know, personally, I go into a lot of articles you know, tie them into the scriptures or give updates on what's going on. Okay. And those are all very important things. But at the same time, there's also exhorting lessons. You know, there's a uh, reprove, reproving lessons. You may have a, you may have seen a, a movie or a TV show that, you know, drop some gems in there. You could do a lesson on it. There's so many things that you can, you can uh, uh, tie the scriptures to and bring edification from. And a lot of these things are examples that highlight certain points that are made in the Bible that can then make it easier for the listeners to relate or to understand or to receive it. Okay, but the whole point is what? To edify, to build. So uh, now let's go, because guess what? It, 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 it's, there's two sides to it, okay? And you have consequences if you, don't, if you don't do the work of the Lord. It's not just that you would be rewarded for doing it, but there's going to be consequences if you don't. And if, if you feel like you, you know, you're being forced to do it, eventually it's going to get to the point where you'll be fed up because you don't you're not in, intrinsically motivated. Uh, this is Revelation chapter two, verse five. And this is an example um, uh, with what Yahweh Shai was, was uh, saying to I forgot what church this was. It was this Ephesus. OK, to the church of Ephesus. But guess what? The message is still relevant to today. And it says here, remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. And so if the Lord said that to them, would could he not do the same for you to say that you came in hot at one point? You were very hot. You were always doing lessons. You were always reading this. This was like a like a brand new chick you're talking to. And you were all infatuated with it. And then over the years, you just started to cool down and dull down. And it's just like, now it's just like, you know, the chick you've been married to for 60 years. And you're like, Yo, I'm tired of her ass, you know, and, you know, every now and then I'll, I'll deal with her. Guess what? You can't treat the scriptures like that. Because then you start being complacent. You start slowing down. I mean, there's a balance, right? Everybody has a balance. There's times when you're super hot and there's times where you cool down and you super, it's all a balance. But. If you start to see yourself going in a downward slope, a downward spiral, and it's just boom, 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 you need to check yourself quick. Because if you don't, you're going to run out of, I don't know, walking room, and eventually you're just going to fall off. Okay? Got him up out of there. You're going to be up out of there. All right? <laughs> That's the inside joke. But anyway, um, <clears throat> moving on. Um, Let's go here to the book of Revelation, chapter three, verse 20. And this is also another uh, good, important precept. Now, I think I might have brought out this precept uh, in a previous lesson. But the point here is this is Revelation, chapter three, verse 20. It says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And this is dealing with the door of your mind. If any man hear my voice and open the door. So how do you hear the voice of the Lord through the prophets? 
Okay, there are various scriptures that go into that. Uh, Matthew 10 and, and was it 10, 10 and 20. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. There's also another precept that says, um, he that heareth you heareth me. So if you hear the words of the prophets of the Lord, you're going to hear the Lord. So how do you hear the voice of the Lord through the prophets? So if you stop and listen and take heed, then it says, I will, I will come into, oh, it says, and open the door. I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. And the same way this works in one direction, it can work in the other, right? Because if the Lord starts supping with you, but then you, you close the door or you kick him out because you start filling up your mind with, look, what's going to happen, right? Let's take this example. The scriptures say, can two walk together except they be agreed, right? Or what, what fellowship hath had darkness with the light? You can't have both at the same time. It's either light when, when there's light, darkness disappears. When there's darkness, light disappears. So if, if Yahweh Shai is, um, if Yahweh Shai is the light that is now supping with you inside of your mind, what do you think happens when you introduce darkness in your mind? When over time you start to become complacent and you start to get distracted and then you start to neglect the word of the Lord. You start to neglect the Lord. You, what's going to happen? Eventually, more and more distractions, more and more of the world is going to is going to uh, uh, seep into your mind. And the more that enters your mind, the, the further away your Shai goes, because you can't have both at the same time. Right. So you become a friend of the world, you introduce slothfulness and darkness and demons into your mind, the Lord ain't going to be in there because he's going to leave. Because what, why, why why would the Lord be, why would light be there if now there's darkness pushing it out? See, so the same way as as, as the, the verse says, the Lord will come in and sub with you if you don't do the right thing and you don't show him that you're, you're grateful and you don't remain diligent, then he'll leave. And guess who's going to be supping with you then? Them demons. And maybe they might turn you into the sup. <laughs> and they'll sup with each other on you. <laughs> and that's not what you want. Okay, that's a that's a very dark and terrible and scary path. And that's not where you want to find yourself. So the safest thing, the best bet is... Um, let's see. Let me finish it off with this precept. So it's a... It's a very scary thing, but at the same time, you know, if you if you if you know what you have to do and you do it, then it's really a beautiful thing to do the work of the Lord. Because you know these scriptures, I mean, this is this is what really excites us when we when we talk about scriptures, when we break them down, we do lessons on them, we go into them, we learn new things. That that's that's what excites us. Just like people that are into football or basketball, when you talk to them about that, that's what excites them. Well, it should be the same way with the scriptures. This is 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10. It says, Wherefore, the rather brethren, uh, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. So we know we're called, but we don't know if we have been elected. So in order to make that sure, we have to continue to give diligence as much as we can and make it a habit. There's a saying, um, watch your words for they be watch your thoughts for be, they become your words watch your words for they become your actions watch your actions for they become your habits and watch your habits for they become your destiny or your lifestyle see so that's for negative thoughts but you can also use that in a in a balanced way on the right hand side for positive thoughts the more positive thoughts you have, the more positive words, the more positive words, the more positive actions, the more positive actions, the more positive habits. You got to build and form good, uh, diligent habits. And over time, that becomes a lifestyle. And once once that's that, once that's once that's set, you're good. Then you just continue. That's your lifestyle. That's what you do. OK, so as it says, to make your, your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, ye shall never fall. So with that, I'm going to end it here. Lord willing, that was edifying to the elect. In closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Until next time, Shalom.